What's up everybody? Coach Milfs here coming at you with a brand new Overwatch video and in this video we're going to be breaking down the best hero tier list for February and in order to do that we're going to be breaking down the top 10 pick rates in Grandmaster, break down why and what has been changing, what you should be playing and a lot of things you should be thinking about when deciding who to main, who to pick and all that stuff. So make sure you watch to the end but go to the Game Leap website in the links down below for in-depth advanced VODs, tips and tricks and much much more. Go check it out in the links down below but without further ado let's jump into the video now kicking it off with the first character type on the list we're going to be talking about the tanks and we usually start with the tanks because tanks dictate metas and they are more or less the frame of any given team composition so we're going to be going at them in order there are actually four tanks that made it into the top 10 pick rate list right now kicking it off with number one the most picked character in the entire game right now in grandmaster none other than wrecking ball now, this is something that we speculated a while back, how Wrecking Ball was becoming better and better. It seemed every single month or every single week that went by, Wrecking Ball saw more and more pick rate. And especially when Sigma saw substantial nerfs, which actually did affect him down the pick rate list, which we're going to talk about in a second. Wrecking Ball was a character that did receive some minor buffs in his adaptive shields in the past, but it really didn't change his pick rate. In fact, he actually grew in pick rate because relative to the rather large changes of Sigma, Wrecking Ball ate up a lot of his pick rate share, and now Wrecking Ball is just seeing a ton of pick rate. And if you're looking for a character that I think really transitions from the low rank to the high rank the best right now, and probably one of the characters with the most individual impact, look no further than wrecking ball honestly he is very good and a lot of the characters that are going to be good whether they're dps or support are characters that either play well with the wrecking ball or characters that have some way to shut down a wrecking ball so just keep that in mind as we go forward and then we're going to move on to the next tank on the list which is actually and surprisingly zarya with almost as high of a pick rate as wrecking ball filling out the natural pairing now of wrecking ball and zarya now there are many reasons why Zarya is seeing quite a bit of play right now. The first reason, of course, is the fact that she can enable Wrecking Ball like we talked about before. She can generate charge by bubbling the Wrecking Ball, getting him out of situations where he would normally get shut down, and because of that, she generates charge in the process and just is able to output tons and tons of damage on the front line. The other tanks that do see play besides Wrecking Ball, which is Roadhog and Sigma, Zarya has the capability to shut both of these characters down with ease, especially if she gets high energy, which means that she can enable Wrecking Ball to kind of just roll around the enemy team, do what he wants without getting interrupted, and she can bully any other tanks that see play, and combine that all with the fact that a Graviton Surge by itself is going to be team fight winning when the enemy doesn't have a shield, which there's a lot less shields being played, period. Zarya is just like the powerhouse that I think is incredibly good, not only just to dominate games and carry, but as a character, you really understand and learn the aspect of pushing and retreating based on your cooldowns you practice mechanical based things like tracking and you live and die based on your positioning Zarya is not only an amazing character to pick right now just at, from a meta point of view but from improving yourself and developing yourself as a player Zarya is an amazing tank to pick if you're looking for not only a high impact character that will make you a better player but let's talk about the bottom of the top 10 characters that are being picked right now in Grandmaster and we mentioned it before but it's Sigm and Roadhog now these characters do see quite a bit of amount of pick rate at 5.70 and 4.4 respectively but that being said these characters are more likely either specialty or situational sigma in particular is really really difficult to play and extract a certain amount of value from him because yes he does see quite a bit of play in grandmaster still but if you look at any of the other ranks maxers diamonds platinums sigma's pick rate just falls off the freaking cliff this is because after those sizable nerfs that Sigma receives, only players that play Sigma almost perfectly can even get enough value to justify running him, while if you play a character like Wrecking Ball, you're almost guaranteed to get a certain amount of value. Sigma requires you to really work at it, not only perfectly max minning all of your abilities to make sure you have your shield up at the right time, your kinetic grasp for when you need it, and you're consistently doing damage, but also positioning yourself in a way to where you can stay alive long enough to maybe clutch up 
the point with your attrition or your ultimate and when you think about characters like Roadhog and Zarya and even Wrecking Ball himself all these other tanks have pretty positive matchups up against the Sigma so while yes Sigma can still be played if you learn to master him you might want to look towards other options if you're picking up a tank for the first time or if you're really just trying to find the best easiest to access value right now Sigma might not be your best bet unless you're specifically pairing him with a combo DPS that really can enable him or use him very well and I'm going to get to some of those options a little bit later but the next character that we got to talk about is of course that Roadhog and we did mention how Zarya can really prevent him from getting a lot of value so if you're up against the Zarya and she's really good at bubbling off your hooks that can be a problem but one of the big benefits to Roadhog right now is that he can put a lot of pressure on Wrecking Ball not only can he hook him which if you combine it with any other CC will just kill him his ultimate allows you to kind of solo ultimate a lot of situations get that wrecking ball off the playing field which is worth it a hundred percent of the time now that being said remember that a roadhog lives or dies by how many hooks he can consistently hit and there's gonna be many games where if you do not hit enough hooks and you're not securing enough kills you are far better off playing another tank so he's really punishing in that regard and if you do not hit these hooks a lot of the times you are just a giant old battery for the enemy team and you are just gonna be throwing by picking roadhog now we're going to the next character type that i wanted to talk about in this video we have the dps and there is only actually two dps in the top 10 but i will mention some other dps as well because typically dps see less giant amounts of pick rate because there's more to choose from and there's more overlap but right now the top two dps that are seeing play is mccree at number one and tracer at number two this is actually really really interesting because mccree kind of came out of nowhere he wasn't even in our top five before and now he's our number one most picked in grandmaster now remember what we talked about before wrecking ball is one of the best characters in the game right right now and if you cannot play well with wrecking ball which mccree doesn't really play that well with wrecking ball you have to be playing a character that has some game against wrecking ball and what does mccree have he has a cc which can keep wrecking ball in check and because of his high health total he can survive and sustain a lot more of these coordinated assaults between something like a tracer and a wrecking ball so for those reasons mccree is seeing a lot of play he also is a character that does get completely zoned out by sigma which is a character that that sees less play right now so mccree is one of those characters that you're gonna see played a lot because he plays well near azaria they can bring a pretty good base to the table and that wrecking ball is gonna get punished if he ever tries to dive in because the mccree has flash so mccree is a great pick right now if you're looking for a hit scan to play mccree just might be your best bet but let's talk about tracer and tracer's an interesting one she's still been at the top and she's probably gonna still be at the top because she plays really well with wrecking ball and with Zenyatta, which, spoiler alert, is our number one support. Now, I've talked about Tracer a lot in previous videos, so I don't think I really need to harp on her all that much. A lot of what's going to dictate how well you play on Tracer is not only your timing and coordination with your Wrecking Ball, but just that ability management, how far you can go with each and every blink, how much value you can get out of each and every one of your abilities, and how that translates to team fights one overall. These are all things that are going to matter on Tracer, but I should be doing an in-depth Tracer dive guy before too long on this channel so make sure you hit smash that like and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that and as far as some other dps that you could play the top dps after the mccree and tracer at definitively first and second are characters like ash echo widow and hanzo now these are all characters that are good in different situations double sniper has always been pretty good with wrecking ball because they can put in value from a distance while wrecking ball dives in and wrecking ball creates a lot of space on the battlefield for snipers to get good crosses on and of course Zarya pairs really well with Hanzo because Zarya Hanzo grab dragon it's a really good ultimate especially if you manage to either pick that Zenyatta or if you bait out that defensive ultimate and Echo and Ash both saw some nerfs fairly recently and while it did affect their pick rate it's not by a giant margin both of these characters are still very good especially if you get a mercy pocket for either of these you can really enable them to do a lot more and get a lot more done than on average but let's talk about the last but certainly not least role in the game we have the supports and there are actually four in the top 10 let's kick it off with the number one we already mentioned in zenyatta 
Now, Wrecking Ball might be the most picked character in the game, but Zenyatta is assuredly the linchpin of the entire meta. When you give Discord to a target, every single thing on the entire enemy team is going to be looking at that target. You have Zenyatta pushing through damage, Wrecking Ball executing a dive, Tracer going in, Echo going in from the side, and Discord basically creates a singular target. And it's kind of interesting how things evolve because it really just puts a giant weak point on the enemy team that anyone one on your team can kind of capitalize whenever they see fit unlike a dive composition of the past with like winston and diva where the entire team would do a coordinated assault on one target zenyatta creates opportunities that the rest of the team can decide when to go on at any given moment and discord is a lot of the time going to convert some of these kills that would have just been damage done that gets healed up to kills that actually stick and that is very very important that being said zenyatta is one of the hardest characters to play in the game not not only does he require insane mechanical skill, but positioning is going to be one of the most important factors where if you position wrong even slightly, you are just going to get murdered again and again. Zenyatta also sees a giant drop off as you go towards the lower ranks, and it's a character that a lot of players don't reach that apex of his impact until you get up to the higher ranks. Now that being said, he's still worthwhile to learn, and I do think that if you get good at Zenyatta, you're going to make yourself a much better player, but it can be brutal when you're playing in some of the lower ranks when you got no peel at all even though in the higher ranks you would be getting at least a decent amount of peel but regardless it's important for you to understand just how powerful Zenyatta is in the meta and then we got to talk about the second most pick support with a very high pick rate right now at 7.96 and that's Mercy now Mercy not only plays extremely well with Wrecking Ball but she really plays well in compositions that Wrecking Ball you know plays against and plays with really sporadic compositions where Characters are all over the map trying to take off angles. They're flying around. Wrecking Ball's flying around. You got a Tracer on the flank. You got an Echo in the air. Mercy not only can heal targets on the fly because she has that mobility, but she could also pocket characters like McCree, like Ash, like Echo, like Widow, like Hanzo, and enable these DPS to do even more, while at the same time being a really good substitute for a main healer when she needs to be. On that front line, Wrecking Ball comes back. He's low. Zarya needs to get up to full. She can do that job and she can enable when she needs and that flexibility is something that is unrivaled on top of that her res ability cannot be overstated because a lot of times especially with the characters that are seeing play right now a character on the enemy team will just get a pick out of nowhere whether it's a hook whether it's a zenyatta volley whether it's a widow headshot and mercy being able to wipe that away really easily and then protect that with a zarya bubble that can be a way to bring the team fight back to parity and kind of give you a soft reset which is really really nice all in all Mercy is a really fantastic character to be playing right now in this meta. Now, let's talk about the last two supports and the last two characters I wanted to talk about in this video, which is Brig and Ana, both seeing about a 4% pick rate, with Brig seeing a little bit more pick rate. Now, both of these characters are really powerful. I stressed it many times in the past how individually powerful Brig is and how individually powerful Ana is, and the playmaking potential, especially for Ana, that you bring to every single game. But there are weaknesses for playing these characters, and you also always got to think about what you are removing from a composition when you are playing one of these supports over some other support. First off, let's talk about Ana. Yeah, Ana can carry team fights all by herself, but if you think about the really disorganized and spread out nature of compositions, Ana's nade is going to have a hard time getting some guaranteed big value. Like you might be able to get a one or two man nade, but you're not going to get those four and five mans. It's very, very difficult. And with less Roadhog seeing play, you don't have a character that you really just shut down. And while definitely good Ana's can still get a lot of value, it's going to require a great amount of you balancing that heal with that damage-based aspect of Ana, looking for opportunities to find value with your regular primary fire and with value sleeps. Because after you keep your main tanks up and the rest of your team kind of topped off, there's going to be a lot of downtime where you're not just pumping your main tank with heals over and over and over again. You're going to pump that Wrecking Ball up and he's going to go off and do his own thing. You're not just pumping into a Rhine nonstop as the team fight keeps progressing. And then you got to think about a character like Brig, which, yes, is very good at stopping a Wrecking Ball. You rock a Brig and a 
Tanner McCree. Now you got the CC required to actually kill a Wrecking Ball. But think about this. What do you give up for that Brig? If you're not playing that Zenyatta and now you're playing Brig plus something like Mercy, you got no defensive ult. So now you're very susceptible to grab. So there's always something that you're giving up when you add a different support on. And it's perfectly fine to do that. But if you keep losing the fight again and again to one thing and it's something that you can counter from a support point of view, then maybe you should swap up your character. But I do think it's important for you to understand that a lot of different supports are viable right now. But go to the Game Leap website in the links down below for in-depth advanced VODs, tips and tricks over every single one of these characters plus more. We got it all on the Game Leap website, so do yourself a favor. Go check it out right now. But thank you so much for coming by. That's all I got for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time...